Now that we've finished weaving, it's time to wrap things up. It's art time! With Mr. Mayberry. Let's get busy! Welcome to Art Time with Mr. Mayberry. Today I'm going to show you how to finish the weaving project that we started last week. So let's get started. It's time to make some art. Okay, today I'm going to show you how to finish the weaving that we started last time. And the first thing you need to do is make sure you finish all the way down within about a half inch from the bottom. You need to go ahead and weave all the way down that far. And then let me show you how we're going to finish this off. And I'm just going to take it off of the uh, tongue depressor that I used last time. And then I'm going to take this piece and I can turn the whole thing over to work on this. It might be a little easier. And I'm going to wrap it around this last one and I'm going to, to knot it to this last one. I'm going to go ahead and let's see. I'll take slide this back just a little so I can get to it. And I'm just going to be double knotting. So I'm, I'm wrapping around itself and pulling it tight to the warp there. So I'm attaching the woof to the warp. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to knot again on that same piece. Wrap it around itself again and then pull it tight again. So I'm just wanting to fasten that down so it doesn't slide off when I take this off of the loom. Now that brings me to the next point. There's two ways that we can finish this. Okay, of course I want to trim off this edge but not too close because I don't want it to unravel on me. Okay, so that is now the weaving is done and it's time to take it off the loom. You can either actually, first of all, you could leave it on the loom if you just want to display it like this, you might um, cut a hole here in the back that could go over a nail or you could attach a piece of yarn or some other kind of fastener that you could use to hang this up on the wall. So that's one way you could do this. Although this loom is not really intended to be something that you would display on, it's not, you could, I guess you could use a prettier color cardboard if you wanted to do that. Um, but really this is supposed to be a, a, just a functional thing that you can use over and over again if you take good care of it. You can use the loom uh, for many times and make, make lots of weavings. Okay, you notice too, I just remembered, the, uh, this weaving did gather in the middle. Last time I mentioned I was going to try to keep it from doing that, but even though I tried, each time I went around it still pulled in on itself. Which when we take it off the loom, it might relax that a little bit and might be able to move around just a little so that it's, it doesn't look quite as gathered when we take it off. The next step, you can, um, next step is going to be taking it off the loom and let's start, we'll start doing that. Now, a couple ways you can do this. Number one would be to cut these, take the, we'll take off each of these strands. You could cut these apart and tie them together. Now I don't want to do it on this one so I'm going to show you that process on another one and then I'll come back and show you how I want to finish this one off another way that you can do it. So it's actually three ways you could you could leave it on the loom and then I'm going to show you two others. So let's look at another weaving that I have and this one's already come off the loom and then I'm going to show you how you can um, finish this off. Okay so I, it's, it's taken off. We're going to start on this this far side here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the part that was over the end of the loom cut that loop into two pieces and then I'm going to tie them together in just a double knot. I want to pull kind of snug but not too tight because I don't want it to gather in from the end and then I'm going to wrap it around again this is actually a square knot the way I'm doing it you wouldn't have to do a square knot, but square knots seem to work pretty good as far as keeping tight and not coming apart. So it's called a square knot because it's shaped like a square. We talked about this last time as well. So there it is. And you can do that to each one of these all the way across. Let me just do a couple more so you can see the process again. I cut the loop and then I take one end, wrap it around the other pull it snug and then I do that again okay there's gonna be one more thing about doing it this way that you'll need to know and that is when we get down here to the end 
there's one piece here on the end is not part of another loop. So what we can do, and I'll go ahead and do that right now, is I can tie it to the one next to it. And then that'll be secure. You want to try to cut it off. If you're going to leave the fringes, you'll want to cut it off the same length as the other pieces. And I can show you that here in just a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and finish each of these out so that we have these fringes on the end. And I'll let you see what that looks like in just a moment. Okay, so now I've tied all the pieces together and now I have this fringe on the end. And I, I'd suggest leaving that. It looks pretty decent. And then it'll, uh, in case something should slip a bit, you can always retie it back. Um, but I wouldn't cut that off probably too close. You could, you could try it and see. Um, but just from experience, I would say probably better just to leave that fringe on there. And now I have a couple long pieces here, um, those single strands at the end that I tied to the one next to it. And so now what I'm going to do is cut that off even or close to the fringe right beside it. And so there's that one, and then there's one on the other side that did the same thing. Okay, so this is a finished piece then, and this can be used as some kind of a doily set on a table and maybe set something on it as a decoration. You could use it as a, as a rug for a doll, a doll house, or for a pet. So that's a, that's a finish, or you could, um, this one's more for displaying like on a table when you, when you cut it off and with the fringes like that. That's, it's not as much for hanging up, it's more for setting down on a table. And so let me show you the other way that you can do this. And so that's, here is the original piece that I did that's still on the loom. So next thing I'm going to do is take this off the loom. So I'll have these loops on the end except for the one, which I'll need to tie to the one next to it. So I'm taking this off of the loom. And the way I'm going to do this is actually this this is a this way I think is a little easier than trying to tie all the strands together and it looks really nice when you get done. And this is so that you can hang it up. You can't you could display it laying down on a table, but I think it would look nicer this if you want to hang your uh your weaving up on the wall, this would be the way to do it. So let's I'm going to go ahead and tie this to the piece next to it. Remember, I'm not cutting those pieces, so I'm just going to leave it tied to this loop. This might be a little harder to see against the dark background there, so let me leave this cardboard right here behind it. Because it's a dark piece of yarn. Okay, so I'm just going to tie that once, kind of knot it, and then wrap it around that piece again and do that again. This doesn't necessarily have to be a square knot. But if you can figure out how to do one on there, that, that's fine as well. Okay, so that piece is tied on. Now this, I will cut. And this can be done cut a little bit lower. You don't have to have a fringe on this part. Okay, next what I'm going to do is fasten a rod through these loops on the end. And you can use just a dowel rod. Or you could use actually a stick, a twig, piece off a tree. Um, you could also use a pencil. Maybe if you have a pencil that's not sharpened, that would work as well. In fact, let's start with the pencil and we'll see what this looks like. I'm going to twist this around one direction. It doesn't matter which way you start, but what then you'll do is take the next loop and twist it the other way around once. And that'll create some tension between these these two pieces and the pencil in this case and that'll help hold it onto the pencil so that it doesn't slide off real easy. It still could slide off but it won't be as easy. So you, the first one you twist around one way and then the second one you twist the other way. Third one you twist the same as you did the first one. So I'm alternating this every other one. They'll just twist a different direction. So I'm twisting it around once once to the right, once to the left, once to the right, once to the left, just back and forth. And you do this all the way across till you run out of loops. And like I said, that'll help create some tension on the, the loops and the whatever you use for a rod or stick there. Okay, so then that would just hang 
on that piece right there. I'll go ahead and do the other side and then I'll show you what this looks like when it's finished. Okay, I've taken it off of the loom. And again, like I said, if you've taken care of your loom here and not roughed it up too bad, you could use this to make more weavings. Reuse that. And then here's what it looks like on the pencil and on the dowel rod. Okay, so it's looped around there. Like I said, I, I alternated the direction that the loops are turned, and that just helps it keep it from sliding off as easy. Okay, let me turn it this way, and you can see what the dowel rod looks like at the top. Okay, so now we've finished our weaving, and it's ready to display. So this is our project for today, finishing our weaving. If you like this project, subscribe to my channel and share it with people that you know. Thanks for coming to art class, and I'll see you next time. See you later. Hi, bye. Over, under, over, under, over, under, stop.